both in our natural role and also as a voluntary value partner, we would see it as our responsibility in Watcher and Swindon to make sure that the sector's in an opportunity to bid properly to ESF. Um, and I think, that, I think the two things, I mean, Simon's talked about both options really. One is joint bidding in, um, as, a, as a consortium and, and also joint bidding across sector. Our leadership management project, which is in there, is actually, we're the lead partner and the second partner is a college. So there's an opportunity to build partnerships with local authority or with colleges or whatever to put bids in, providing that the appropriate sort of uh, partnership arrangements are in place. Um, brokering other partnerships and subcontract opportunities, Simon's absolutely right, and I've, I've had worse than that. Uh, what we've heard quite a lot is people are invited to put their name forward for the bid, and then when the bid's won, suddenly the main contractor's not interested. Uh, we've had that, and I know other people have had that experience. So just sort of helping to broker that, but also perhaps just keeping an eye on to make sure that people honour their promises. So once we know what the opportunities might be, we will start to look, you know, working with Simon and, and to, to, to sort of see what, what can be done in this area and, and the interest. And indeed across areas, because some of these will be, you know, uh, uh, more than one read area. Informal adult learning, Debbie's going to talk about. Um, apprenticeship delivery, we're going to be involved in fair train in delivering apprenticeships, we hope. Um, and we want to use that as a platform to try and get more apprenticeship delivery in the sector. And again, we'd be interested to talk to people about trying to get that going. 16 to 19 learning, um, we, that's an area of, of, of continued interest. And I think there's some work to be done there. Um, and I've mentioned the sort of national uh, issues. It links. We also uh, are in constant discussion with other similar learning consortia like ourselves about working cross-regional. Um, we're already involved in the South East and we're having discussions with colleagues in London about if, we're, if we have much bigger contract sizes, whether we share contracts. So, so, so we're going to try and draw what we can in to the, to the area for light and support what's going on in the area. But I think the important message in relation to ESF is you know, once, once we know where we're going with it, we'll start to you know, organise events and activities to make sure that people know what's going on, but also have a chance to talk to each other and to talk to potential bidders. Um, this, is, this is a guide to the Skills Funding Agency from the point of view, hopefully, of, of voluntary sector organisations. And at the back of it um, is this slide. So, so don't fret too much. It's a tiny little slide on here. There is a bigger copy of it. And that's the idea is really, this is a sort of flow chart because one of the issues you've got to think about in relation to any funding opportunity, and I know it's easy to say when you're not so easy to do when you're up against it, but actually when you get funding from most of these sources to do with learning and skills, and I suspect DWP is the same, it's not getting the money, it's delivering the contract that's actually the issue. So, so a lot, I know at least one organisation who ended up being taken to court because they took the money and thought, that's it, that's what we have to do now, and actually you know, never delivered the contract. So when you're looking at this, it's saying, well, actually, what, you know, what is appropriate for us as an organisation? So this is just trying to take you through uh, the processes by which uh, you, know, you as an organisation might want to think about where you're going. And some of you will have done this already, and some of you will be immersed in this and will understand this, but it's really, I think it's quite important, when, particularly when you're talking to uh, a varied audience. The first thing, if thinking about the Skills Funding Agency, but I think it applies to all of them, really, do what the Skills Funding Agency want to do match what you want to do? And you've got, that's the first really, really important question. If the answer is no, go somewhere else, it would be my advice. If the answer is yes, is are the systems they're using suitable for your clients? We've, we've, we've had problems with um, performance levels, for example, working with probation clients, you know, who, 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 if they could turn up every day and do a course and get an achievement, would probably not be probation clients in the first place anyway. And so we've, you know, we've had a real problem with that sort of thing. And if you're not sure, then the two softest streams and I don't mean soft in the pejorative sense, I mean the ones which actually you can adapt to your needs and to your clients' needs, will be adult safeguarded learning or informal adult learning can be called, and the one that Simon mentioned, ESF community grants, um, because they are ones where there's the opportunity to have a bit of negotiation about what you're trying to do. If you think you can do it, but you're not, the next question is, can you manage the systems? Can you do the offset inspections and the, uh, minimum level of performance and the financial returns and the management information system, blah, 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 blah. And if you're not sure, or, or then, if the answer is no, then I <laughs> go somewhere else again. If you're not sure, or you think you can do it partly, then work with others as a subcontractor consulting partner is not a bad idea, because that one 
gives you some support and two, gives you an opportunity to experience it. And you may decide when you've done it for a while and you've filled in the four pages. How long is the, the uh, individual learner record now? It's four or five pages long in it. You know, once you've, you know, you've filled two of them, you think actually it's not for me, we'll go somewhere else, thank you very much. And then finally, if you can do all that, then by all means get and bid to the SFA or whoever. So, so it's really just, the message is, locally we will work with you to try and maximise the opportunities to work in, because I think I agree with Simon, there's not enough uh, voluntary organisations accessing ESF. But at the same time, be realistic about what's going to be possible. Um, and when you're thinking about where you're going, make sure that you, know, you understand both the opportunities but also the limitation of the opportunities or where's the best place to go in, in this rather spaghetti-like system that's now been introduced. And I'll probably run.